So Adam Friedman um, made a, a tweet this morning. Here's a tweet. And basically it says, yo, producer grind, ill mind, Sunny digital, pain one, murder beats, um, and anyone else. Can we do a Twitter spaces and talk more in depth about why so many producers have a hard time getting paid from their placements and what they can do about it. Okay. So this is definitely some, uh, uh, um, an issue that is, is ongoing. Um, I'll try to make this bigger. You guys can see that, right? Let me just, let me just do that. This is, this is an issue that has been ongoing pr pretty much forever. Um, and, and it doesn't matter at what level of a producer you are. You can be an upcoming producer with zero placements and you just got your first placement. You can be a producer that might have a couple placements and an admin publishing deal, or you can be, you know, a trillion times platinum trillion Grammy award winning a billion Grammy nominated multi gazillion platinum producer and still also get to have a hard time getting paid for your placement now th this and, and again these are just my personal thoughts and, and I respect every single person that's on this list um you know pain murder sunny the entire producer grind team and and every single producer so this is not me speaking on behalf of anyone this is me just speaking on my own experience this is me speaking on my observations um and kind of my opinion on where we're at uh in, in the state of music producers and the methods of how we get paid and, and why payments tend to be delayed so i'll start by saying this and this might shock some people all right and, and and you know a lot of times when people hear the truth about certain things you're you're not expecting those answers and so naturally your your brain the human brain will reject or be in denial when it comes to certain things. Um, so I ask that you guys watching this right now just sort of bear that in mind and also be a little open-minded to this. I want all of you guys to open your mind up right now. Breathe. And take this information in as open-minded as possible and try to try to really take this for what it is okay so the question that we're trying to answer right now is this why do so many producers have a hard time getting paid for their placements so let me just very very quickly because a lot of you guys are music producers and a lot of you guys probably know this but let me quickly, quickly define what a placement is in terms of in context of a music producer. So for music producers, for people like me and for a lot of you guys, a placement for a music producer is basically the process of us creating a beat, creating an original piece of music, which is a beat, and then someone else using that beat in exchange for getting paid for that beat right so you can get a uh you can get a beat placement we'll call it a beat placement you can get a beat placement on a major album right like a j cole album or a gunna album or whatever it is or you can get a placement on like a tv show right so i can get like a tv sync placement on like a netflix show and that's a another form of a placement. Um, I could even get a placement on like a YouTube video, right? Because essentially the idea is I made the beat, I I sell it to that you know YouTube channel, 
and they pay me to use that beat. So it's it's this pro this idea of I make a beat, which is my intellectual property, and I give it to someone in exchange for getting paid. And then there's contracts involved. So that's what a placement is. And the most, as of right now, the highest desirable placement is the obvious get a beat placement with a major album, right? So you get a placement with a major album with a major artist that does a ton of streams and everyone makes money that way. So in terms of answering the question of why do so many producers have a hard time getting paid for their placements? It, 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 it there's lots of nuances to that, um, to that issue. And so I'm just going to do it from the context of one particular example, but just bear in mind that like, there are many different iterations of this. So this is not the only scenario that happens. This is just one of a, a handful of scenarios as to why a music producer has a hard time getting paid for their beat placement. So let, let's give an example. I'm gonna, let, let's say I get Illmind gets a beat placement with, I'll name an artist. I'll just say Jay-Z, okay? I'll just, I'll just say Jay-Z because, because it's Hove. So let, let me walk you through this. Let's say I make a beat here on Twitch from scratch. And I end up using a melody loop from DJ Name, right? Okay, so DJ Name, are you in here? Show yourself. Me and DJ Name actually have like over 100 collabo beats together. So I'll, I'll say Jay-Z. Um, is our artist. Okay. So I hear a DJ name melody loop and I love it. Okay. So I use it. And again, this is a fake scenario, but very, very much an example of a scenario that has happened and that could happen. And again, we're answering the question of why producers have a hard time getting paid for their placements. I'm about to explain this to you. So I'm here on Twitch like I am today, right now, and I hear a melody from DJ Name that I really like that he sent me. So I end up making a beat using DJ Name's melody, and it's a great beat. So then I take that beat and I send it over to Jay-Z, okay? Jay-Z hears it, and he's like, wow, I'm gonna use this. This beat's fire, and again, I'm, just bear with me. This is you know, highly unrealistic for me to just like call Jay and send him a beat, but just for the sake of this example. So I sent him the beat and he's like, this is fire. I'm going to do a song to it. Jay-Z does a song to the beat. He ends up deciding to put that song over my beat and DJ names beat on his album that he wants to release. Okay. So he decides to use that beat. I'm, I find out. So he calls me, Jay-Z, you know, his people hit me and they're like, yo, Ilma, we want to use this beat for Jay's album. Let's begin the process of getting some paperwork going, getting all the publishing information from everyone going. Let's start the process. So at that point in which you discover that an artist like Jay-Z wants to use your beat. That's technically sort of the beginning stages of starting the process of clearing that beat and getting the paperwork going so that you can get paid, so I can get paid, DJ Name can get paid, Jay-Z, everyone, everything is there. The publishing information, writing, all everything's on paper, everything's registered so on and so forth. So we start to begin that process and Jay-Z's a rs hit me up and they're like, hey, Illmind, we love this beat, we wanna use this beat for the album. Um, you know, we need to know 
uh, if there's any samples, uh, anything that we need to clear, you know, how many producers are on this? Are there any interpolations? Like, what's up with this beat? One of the first things they might ask is, you know, is this beat usable? And I'm going to tell them, yes, you know, it's usable. It's all original. Um, I have one collaborator on this beat. His name's DJ Name. Okay. And, and uh, we're going to work this out. So they're like, okay, fine. So I hit up DJ Name and I'm like, yo, DJ Name, what's up? Yo, I think we got a placement with Jay-Z. They want to use this beat. Um, that loop that I used on the beat, DJ Name. Is that loop cool? Like, have you sent that loop to anyone? Um, did you do any interpolations on it? Are there any co-producers? Like, you know, the little vocal loop in there. Like, it, who's singing that? right and whoever is singing that how much percentage do they want on this and you know i need their information because we need to get all this paperwork going for clearance so that i can tell jay-z's people that this b is actually usable okay so again i would I, i'm what i'm about to say this is not something that dj name would say or do this is just an example so DJ name, I, I tell that to DJ name. So DJ name hits me back and he's like, yo, ill. Oh my God. That's crazy. I can't believe we got this placement. I, I, you don't understand. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited. This is life changing. Holy shit. Now to answer your question, there is a woman who sings on the sample, but that sample or this the woman singing on it was from a vocal pack that i purchased a few months ago so i'm not exactly sure if that's royalty free or not but i can find out for you but everything else like the pianos and the synthesizers that's all me i it's all original. I didn't interpolate anything. There's no samples. The only thing in there is a little vocal thing. So I'm like, okay, cool. Let me know ASAP, DJ name. If you could let me know, like, who's who that who's the woman singing on there, um, who we need to contact, you know, where you bought it. Like, let's just figure this out. So then, um, I hit. A couple days go by and then I get an email from Jay-Z's people like, yo, ill mind. What's good? Just checking up. Just checking up. What's up with that beat? Are we cool? Are we free and clear? What's up with the loop? What's up with the sample? Yada, yada, yada. So then I hit him back and I'm like, guys, yup, I'll have an answer for you in a couple days. Uh, it, it, it's gonna happen guys like like trust me it's fine i just spoke to dj name we're all good and so another few days go by at this point about a whole week goes by since jay-z's people hit me saying they want to use my beat and i'm still waiting for uh dj name to let me know if the vocal sample he used in the loop is actually clearable and so finally after seven days dj name hits me back and he's like yo um yo uh that vocal loop uh i bought from this particular website it was from a sample pack but and i reached out to the producer who created the sample pack but basically that producer that I bought the sample pack from is saying that the woman that sang on that sample pack had recently cut ties with him um, and they're not really working together anymore, but he needs to find out if they can clear her vocal because he hasn't spoken to her in a couple of years. They kind of had a falling out. So then I'm like, okay, so DJ name didn't know this was going to happen. 
But upon research, he found out that there was a vocal that he used that he purchased from this website and contacted the producer that made the vocals, the, the, the vocal pack. And that producer is saying that he hasn't spoken to the singer on that vocal pack in a few years. And so he needs to, to figure out how to contact her to try to clear that and make sure that she's good and we're all good to use it. So we're not in the clear yet. This is a weekend. We're not in the clear yet. We're still sort of investigating on if we can use this vocal pack or not. So I'm, I'm seven days have gone by. Jay-Z's people are applying a little bit more pressure on myself and my attorney. And they're like, hey, Ill, what's up, dude? How's, 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 how's it going? We want to, we're ready to move forward with this. What's going on? Hove is trying to, Hove's trying to drop like in, in, in a couple weeks. So we want to, we want to get this going. So at that point, myself and my lawyer who has been helping me this entire time are in a little bit of a crossroads because we're in this predicament where we're trying to buy some more time. So Jay-Z's people are getting every day that goes by that we're telling them we need more time. They're getting a little bit more, a little bit more pissed off. And then on the other hand, I'm going back and forth with DJ Name because he had used, uh, unknowingly had used a vocal loop from another vocal pack creator that is having issues with clearing the vocal. So I'm waiting for him and he's waiting for that third person to try to get clearance on this vocal loop that we used in our beat that Jay-Z wants to use. And so that's delaying the process. And now I'm sort of at the mercy of sort of having to force my hand to decide what to do here. So what what do you do in this predicament? Well, you can, you can tell Jay-Z's people wh exactly what's happening. You can say, hey, guys, listen, there's a loop that Illmind used from a producer named DJ Name. And that loop... Uh, contained a vocal sample that we can't seem to clear right now, but we're working on it. And at that point, you can really start to snowball into some really major issues. One scenario, if I do take that route, is Jeezy's people hit us back and say, yo, that's fucked up. And then now all of a sudden, they're like, oh, who's this DJ name guy? We don't we don't like DJ name now because this is all DJ names fault, right? We still fuck with Illmind, but like we don't really fuck with DJ name because DJ name gave Illmind, according to them, them DJ name gave them a loop that isn't clearable. Now DJ name is the bad guy, right? Meanwhile, the entire time it's miscommunication between the the original vocal sample pack creator and DJ name. Right. So it, it, no one did anything wrong. It's just a huge miscommunication. Right. So now Hove is like, well, who the fuck's DJ name? I never heard of him. Like, what? What the fuck? And now my reputation is kind of on the line because now I look weird a little bit. You can forget about DJ name ever working with Jay-Z ever again because he he's being difficult. And if I even try to begin to explain all of this with the original sample creator to hope they don't care. This is a waste of time for them. All they want is uh, the beat and they want to use it and they want to pay people to use it. So now we're jumping through hoops. There's clearances that have to happen. We're waiting on, on the original sample pack creator to get in touch with the vocalist. So the other option is, why don't we just get rid of the vocal sample? Why don't we just get rid of the vocal sample at that point, right? Now we could do that and maybe get someone to re-sing it, but now you're opening up a whole nother set of issues that could happen. What if I attempt to re-sing it and I tell Jay-Z's people, hey, the vocal sample is not clearable. 
but we need someone to re-sing it. Um, they might come back and say, well, we don't have time. Fuck that. We want the original. Or they can say, okay, cool, you have 24 hours. And then I get someone to re-sing it, and I send it back to them. Jay-Z hears it. He's like, I hate this. What happened to the original one? Because Jay-Z doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't care. He's In, in Jay-Z's mind, like the beat is, is his. They're ready to use it. And then he hears the beat different because the vocals are a little different because we had to change some of the melody runs and and change the the texture of it because it wasn't like the original now all of a sudden the song sounds completely different because the vocal was throughout the whole song it wasn't just one part it was like one of the main ingredients for the beat so now the beat sounds completely different hove hears it and he's like what's going on guys like this is not my beat this beats trash i want the original now they're pissed off even more. I wasted a whole day. The singer who I hired to re-sing it, she's excited, but then I tell her that they hated it and now she's fucking traumatized at the idea that she almost got on a Jay-Z album and she wasted, you know, 24 hours in the studio because I forced her. I told her at 12 midnight, yo, go to the studio. There's an opportunity to get on Jay-Z chat. She does it. She pays out of her own pocket to book studio time. So that was a complete waste of money and time for her. Now she's pissed at me. And this whole time I'm waiting on DJ Name to still try to get clearance from the original vocalist who sang on the original OG version from the sample pack creator that DJ Name used. So we're wasting time. People are getting antsy. People are getting pissed. There's confusion happening. Um, the clock is ticking. And I'm in the middle of it all. I'm here putting... Myself and my attorney are here trying to put out fires. So we're spending a, 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 a large portion of our time and energy into putting out these fires. So let's say after two weeks of all this, sh this shit show... The original sample pack creator who DJ Name purchased from that I ended up sampling through DJ Name finally hits DJ Name back and says, hey, I got in touch with the original vocalist. She's down. She's apologetic. She's sorry. She wants to make it work. Let's move forward. So finally, after two weeks, I go back to Jay-Z's people. I say, hey, guys. I got clearance for the original vocal. I'm so sorry this happened. Um, we would love to make this happen. Now, at this point, either one of two things could happen. Either Jay-Z's people are are tired and say, fuck, fuck ill, fuck you guys, we're done. We already got someone else to redo the beat. Okay? So I just completely lost my opportunity and they'll probably never use any of my beats ever again because they don't want to deal with the hassle of if i use an illmind beat it's not clearable or they say thank god great apology accepted let's use this beat let's use the original let's make this happen let's get it cleared so let's just say option number two happens. Scenario number two. They want to move forward. That's best case scenario. Now, myself and my attorney start an email chain and we CC DJ name. We CC the original sample pack creator and we CC the original vocalist on the email chain. Hey guys. Hey guys. We have a Jay-Z placement here, and we want to make this happen. And uh, again, my my attorney is CC'd as well, and my manager. Um, We need to figure out splits. We need, I need all of you guys' attorney's information. I need all of you guys' management information so we can create this one big email chain with all of us on it so that we can all figure out our splits through email so that we can get this thing cleared and registered. 
So on this email chain, you have Illmind, you have Illmind's attorney, you have Illmind's manager, you have DJ name, you have DJ name has an attorney, and then you have the original sample pack creator. That's six people. You have the original sample pack creator's attorney. Okay. And then you have the original singer on it. But then the original singer's mom is the manager. So she's on the email. And then the original singer's mom's cousin's husband is an attorney. So he's also on the email. That's four lawyers and 10 total people on this email to figure out splits, who gets what, and how to clear this thing so that Jay-Z can use it for his album. And guess who's curating all of this? Illmind and Illmind's attorney and Illmind's manager. Why? Because we are the middleman between all of these people that made helped make the song and Jay-Z. So now all of a sudden Jay-Z's AR is like, great, what's up? Hey, CC it on this email are myself. My attorney, my manager, the co-producer on here, his attorney, the, the co-co-co-co-producer who made the original sample pack that the co-producer used, and the vocalist that's on the co-co-co-producer's pack with the vocal on it. Let's Here's where we are. Now, another three weeks after three weeks of delegating back and forth all 50 of us figure out what percentage goes where and we're all actually relatively happy now guess what happens after two weeks three weeks of figuring out who gets what now Contracts have to be made. Producer agreements have to be mocked up. And guess how long that takes? That's going to take weeks. It might take months. It might even take a year. But every single one of those co-producers will receive their own producer agreement. Or we all receive the same producer agreement but they will all individually agree or disagree on certain things. So after, we'll just call it two months of everyone agreeing on something and then the, the final 65 page producer deck is created. After two months, it's ready to sign. Draft version 0.1. Now that contract, that 65 page contract gets sent to Illmind. It gets sent to DJ Name. It gets sent to the original sound pack creator. It gets sent to the original singer. Now guess what happens? Every single one of our lawyers has to read it and be okay with all of the terms. But here's the issue. No one's ever okay with the first terms. That's just how the business is. So now we enter phase two, or it might be even phase three, where we call it the red line phase. You know what the red line phase is? The red line phase is where each individual attorney, each individual producer, co-producer, they get to review the contract and say, I like this, I don't like this, this needs to change. This needs to get increased. This needs to get omitted, blah, 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 blah. They get to red line. That's the nature of negotiation. That's the nature of how this business is done. So you have four different red lines happening all at once. Okay. 
And some co-producers are going to take longer than others. Some, not so long. But it's not their fault. It's not their fault. Okay. It's it's just that they want to make sure that they're covered and their lawyers are looking over these contracts to make sure that they are getting what they agreed to and they what they're getting what they feel they deserve. And so it might take me a couple weeks to get my red lines in if I have any. Let's say it takes DJ name, you know, a week, pretty quick. He, they go back and forth. He agrees. And then the original sample pack creator who got in, they're taking like three weeks. So all three of us have successfully went back and forth and we've redlined and we've gotten to a point where we're happy. But we're still waiting on one more. We're still waiting on one more. And mind you, since day one, about let's just say three months have passed already. The album came out, by the way, guys. The album's out at this point. The album came out two and a half months ago. I found out about the placement three months ago. The album came out three months ago. It's been three months. None of us have gotten paid yet. So we're still waiting on the fourth, the, the singer, the fourth producer, co-producer on the track we're still waiting on the red lines so they're still negotiating no we want this we want to increase our our our, our you know advance whatever still waiting another two months go by still waiting now here's the kicker here's the thing that a lot of people don't know the label jay-z them they're not paying a dime until all of these contracts are signed, sealed, and delivered. So even though we've signed it and we're ready to go, there's one more producer, co-producer left, and they haven't agreed or signed anything, which means that none of us get paid until that fourth and final agreement is signed, sealed, and delivered. So there's really not much more we can do to get paid. We've played sort of played our part in this phase. And now we're waiting. So then six months go by, eight months go by, still redlining, still waiting for whatever reason. It's taking a very long time. Maybe they, maybe, maybe they sent their red lines a month ago, but because the album is out, Jay Z's attorneys who are supposed to reply back to it they're busy at this point because the album is out they're busy signing off and reading contracts that have to do with huge accounts they're look they're they're reviewing super bowl contracts do you think they have time to review a little co-producer contract on an album cut you think they're going to make time to review the fourth and final red line for an album cut from a from a co-producer that's getting 0.05%. They're going to spend their time doing that over a multi-hundred million dollar Super Bowl contract? No. So that red line is going to take a long time. And we are going to wait for a long time in order to get paid. And when I say get paid, I'm talking about our advance. Like this is just the advance, right? Let's say I ask for $40,000, $40,000 advance. We all split it, right? So that's $10,000 each because there's four producers. Let's just say in, in this scenario, that's what we agree to. Right now, eight months go by. DJ Name's attorney reaches out to my attorney. DJ Name's attorney reaches out to my attorney and says, Yo, ill, 
Yo, what's up, guys? We haven't gotten paid. What's up? We haven't gotten paid. It's been eight months. We haven't gotten paid. What the fuck, ill mind? And then we tell them, well, look, we did all we can. We, we got to agreements. We've submitted our agreements. We're just waiting on the singer. We're just waiting on the singer. We're waiting on one more co-producer. I don't know why it's taking long. I can't force the situation. We're, there's only so much we can do. Well, fuck you. We'll never do business with you ever again. We just want DJ Name to get paid. It's only 10,000. Have you gotten paid? Why are we waiting so long? Miscommunication. Lack of experience. Lack of knowledge. Well, guess what? None of us have gotten paid yet. So now an unnecessary bridge has been burned. People are frustrated. The stories are flipped because of iterations and iterations and iterations of the story evolving into different versions. By the time it gets to the public or the receiving end of that story, the story is completely flipped to something fictional. And it's been 12 months and we're still waiting. So this is not, this story has definitely happened. It is happening and it happens a lot. And as you can see, it's not always the label's fault. It's not always the attorney's fault. It's not always the producer's fault. It's not always an aspiring singer that made a song, lended their vocals to a sample pack, and then decided to move to Paris and change their cell phone number and not be, not have any contact. It's not even her fault. And everyone's fucking blaming each other. Oh, fuck the label. Fuck those A&Rs. Fuck this. Oh, this attorney's a dick. Oh, I'll never do work with him. Oh, I'll never use this guy's sample loops. Oh, that person's so difficult to work with. Oh, why are they being so greedy? Where's my money? I worked with him and I haven't gotten paid. Wake the fuck up. Open your eyes. And... Really, 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 really think about and realize what actually happens. Miscommunication. I am a believer in humanity. I believe in, and you guys might disagree, but I inherently believe that like most human beings are, are good people. You know, the music industry gets an extremely bad rap, but I do truly, truly, truly believe that 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
I'm a fan of digging really deep into the roots of things. I think far too often we place blame on each other. Oh, fuck you. I'm right. You're wrong. Well, guess what? The person on the other end who you think is wrong has their version of being right and you being wrong. So who's to say that yours holds more weight than theirs? It's a never ending losing battle for all parties until everyone is fucked. It's like who can stab who first, but you don't kill them immediately. They're still alive. So that like, they can still stab you too. Now you're both bleeding. And then over time, you guys both bleed out and you're both gone. Let's all wake up. Wake the fuck up. Get on point. Communicate. Tell the truth. Don't make assumptions. Be patient. But be firm. And be smart. And swallow your fucking ego. We collaborate because we want to make good music. That's the fucking truth of it all. You know how many collabos I do on Twitch? For all y'all that are new here. All my OGs know. But for y'all who are new here. This is your first time here. You know how many beats I make on this shit? How many people I collaborate with? I'll let them tell you. How many guys? Why don't you tell everyone here. How many collabos that I do. On, on, on Twitch. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. How many on average per day? I'm collaborating with a lot of people. So I'm not even one of those guys that's going to talk shit and not do the thing that I say. And I guarantee you, at some point, I'm going to sample from a random producer, one of you guys who's extremely talented, and you're going to have an attorney. We're going to get a big placement at some point and you're gonna you're, you're not gonna have an attorney so what you're gonna do is you're gonna hire one who isn't really 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 that skilled maybe 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 competent but not super super skilled not the most skilled and that attorney might be on that shit We might have a problem. And you, you'll you never know. You'll never know until you try. You don't know if... You don't know. You're not going to know. Unless you try. That's a risk you'll have to be willing to take. But you will need an attorney. So... I'll put myself out there, bro. And, and I will say for the record, I have 100% been in this type of situation before. And, and it really sucks. It really, really sucks. <clears throat> so, again, that's one scenario that I bet no one has told you about because people don't really tell the truth. A lot of people don't. Or they don't take the time to. But um, that's one absolute hidden truth about why um how and why music producers don't get paid for their placements um another another example really um i i think that's probably the most common example to be honest um i think that some of the other scenarios are a little bit more like on the surface a little more obvious a little more oh wow, like I fucked up type of issues. Um, oh yeah, I didn't even mention that if you're on, on <laughs> if you're on a retainer with your lawyer, you, you'll go broke. You'll go broke. The amount of red lines you'll be doing, the amount of hours clocked in. You're basically breaking even. Let's say you get 10K <laughs> and you have your lawyer on retainer. Yeah, you'll give them the entire 10K in lawyer fees. So you'll basically break even. Um, not not for your publishing and, and all that stuff, depending on what you get for that. Um, 
because you'll get that over time depending on what you got but your, as far as your advance goes if you got like 10k advance and you give it all to your lawyer I mean it is what it is that happens too that happens too um, so again I'll leave you with this N none of us are 100% um, immune to this things happen miscommunication happens people are slow people just because someone doesn't reply to you immediately doesn't mean they don't care that's another thing I want to say just because they don't reply to you doesn't mean they don't care you are not the main character in someone else's story let me repeat that one more time you are not the main character in someone else's story you are the main character in your own story Okay, so people aren't like thinking about you 24 7. Jay Z's not thinking about a little co producer clearance contract. And that's okay. And once you realize the truth in that, I think it'll help you maneuver in this industry a little bit more fluid all right what do you some of you guys is uh takes on this i mean there's there's other things too and and i still would love I, I don't know if adam you're still in here but i i would love to um do a spaces or something with you guys um if you end up doing that on twitter um just just hit me with the dm and let me know i'm definitely down to do it i, I love um i love talking about this stuff and um you know i i think it's a big i think it's a big issue that we are all facing and, and and it's really just at the end of the day um you know it's it's not about like all people being bad people people just want to work most people just want to make music and get paid lawyers want to make it happen and 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 do the best for their clients to make them happy so they can get paid too this is all it is and there's nothing wrong with that and we have to communicate with each other in order to uh, make sure that we're um, make sure that there's no confusion with any of it so no.